Welcome to the virtual tour of Old Campus, the 1960s edition. The one word that always surfaces when talking with students at Valpo during the 1960s was tundra. Everyone has an image that comes to mind, but it is likely not the same. Wherever on new campus you walked on your way to old campus during the snow and cold was your tundra. To bring most of us to the same path, I'd like to begin the walking tour of old campus at the intersection of Lindwood and Mound. Yes, Mound Street, where students walked with impunity down the center of the street. There were so many more of us on foot, no one would ever attempt to drive down that street. On our right was the APO house. To the left was the drama studio and cottage of Professor Vera Hahn. Then there was the gauntlet that students, especially the females, ran between the Phi house and its annex. There was a period when Light My Fire played incessantly from both sides of the street, even at 7 a.m. Once passed there on your right was Greenwich Group. This World War II barracks had radiator heat that would immediately put entire classes to sleep on a cold winter day, needed during the large entering classes of the post-World War II veterans, and later for the baby boomers, this complex was raised in 1968. The entire length of Mound Street would be transformed at the end of the 60s with the construction of six fraternity houses. That particular subject, Greek housing and dormitories, will not be included here. Immediately across Greenwich Street from Greenwich Group was Lemke Hall. Lemke was named for its local architect and had been a student dormitory. Later, it was mainly faculty offices. The story goes that the building was condemned for human habitation, so students were moved out and faculty were moved in. Crossing Greenwich Street, a sidewalk was situated along the west side of Kinsey Hall. Kinsey Hall was built in 1906 and served as a combination of administrative offices and music practice rooms. A fire in 1970 would render the building unusable. O.P. Kretzman had his office in this building. Connected to Kinsey on the south side was Bogart Hall. Bogart was built in 1892 as a printing office. The classrooms on the upper levels of this building might be remembered for the many flying insects that inhabited the room once the weather warmed and the windows were opened. On the west side of the sidewalk was the faculty club with a classroom on the upper level. On the west side of the faculty club was the campus bulletin board. And yes, students did actually stop to read what was posted there. Continuing on the sidewalk, you could look slightly to the left and see the two great brick structures known as Baldwin Hall on the left and Heimlich Hall on the right. The student kissing bridge that crossed the railroad tracks was located on the east side of Baldwin. The Kissing Bridge was still a very important piece of student life during the 60s. Classes in Baldwin, and here you can import your most memorable classes. One might be Dr. Kautz's Western Civ class, another Oliver Smith's General Chemistry for Engineers. They paused for every train, and when the train was passed, students were invited to pick up their chairs and move them back to where they had been. Heimlich Hall was the home of the biology labs and became the home to WVUR. Scanning south across the lawn that served as the site of many outdoor commencement exercises, there are three objects of interest. First is the flagpole. This pole marks the center of the original college building. That building was started in 1860 under the Valparaiso Male and Female College with significant additions in 1867 and 1880. A fire destroyed that building in 1923. A second feature is the bullpen. A gift of the class of 1936, this structure was built from paving bricks from an extension of Locust Street that had been named College Place. At the time of construction, it was identified as a council seat or summer classroom. Later, it became known as the bullpen, where pinning ceremonies were held. 
Though not visible when scanning the area, students will remember the tombstone in memory of George, our faithful campus dog, 1937 to 1947. A newer stone has been added, marking the grave of another campus dog, Barry, 1975 to 1987. Walking north on the sidewalk, the first building on your left is Heritage Hall. Heritage Hall was built in 1875. Fire destroyed its third story in 1879. It was rebuilt in 2010 and rededicated in 2011. During the 1960s, the building was mainly used for its classrooms. It had been the library until Mollering Library was opened on new campus in 1959. During the 1960s, Heritage Hall was a very busy building on Saturday mornings when many freshmen had biology lectures. In case you forgot, freshmen were required to take a Saturday class to keep them from vacating campus for the weekend. Looking to your right, east, you will see Founders Rock. This memorial to the founders of the Lutheran University had been situated in the area of the bullpen and the flagpole until it was moved in 2010 to its current place in front of Heritage Hall. The next building is Flint House. Some classes were taught here, but like Foundry Annex, not everyone ventured into this building. There were several faculty offices housed here, including Professor Friedrich, the Shakespeare professor. The next building is DeMott Hall. During the 1960s, this was the home of the Department of Business. Best remembered for its swayback stairs, the building had been built in 1914 and served as the home to the law school and many other areas before that. The building was raised in 1996. Continuing down the sidewalk, we pass by the brick pillars denoting the entrance to the campus. Crossing Freeman Street, we continue on College Avenue. The first building we see is Moody Labs. Used in the early 60s for some engineering classes, after the opening of Gellerson, more psychology classes began to meet there. It would become known as the Rat Lab. At the north end of the block, at the intersection of Union and College, was Benton Hall, the last old campus location of the map collection. Geography classes met in this building both early and late. Most students in the 60s probably never entered this building. Also infrequently used during the 60s, few students would remember Foundry Annex. This garage was located at the rear of Benton Hall. On rainy days, students propped their feet on the rung of the chair in front of them to allow the water to flow from the doorway to the drain near the professor at the front of the class. Thank you for joining us on this virtual tour of old campus in the 1960s. Hopefully, this virtual tour has jogged some pleasant memories of dear old Valpo.